Hey guys, how you doing? No, that was not a rhetorical question. I really meant it this time. Listen, this episode is going to be so cool. It's like the best episode, like every episode I do. But I got a very, very important message to give you, so I want you to listen up. Do you know what today is? Well, that's right. It is Bob Log the Third's birthday. Ooh, cool, huh? Yeah, it's signed. You know it is. Happy birthday, Bob. Find Bob. Oh, if you don't know who Bob is, then you need to ask about my free surgical procedure because I can help you. Okay. Oh, I am so completely and utterly disamazed, and you will be too once you find out what I'm up to here. You see this? There's a story behind it, but let's start at the beginning. I got a message the other day from our friend Fred Wallachy up in Malibu. You know, it's cold right now in Southern California. It's so cold here that the people in Malibu had two sweaters tied around their neck. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, I got a message from Fred. Fred says, hey, I got a guitar you need to see. And so I got in the car and I drove 26 miles not across the sea, but the other way, um, and arrived at Fred's, and it took me about three hours, but anyway, that's the beauty of living in Southern California. Let's kick this off with Fred telling us what he has. So here we have the AK guitar that used to belong to uh, Byron Perry's grandfather, Woody, who was a professional guitar player, and uh, he brought it in and he said, you know, what can we do with it? And I said, well, we can make it per perfectly beautiful. And so he said, really? And I said, sure. So what I intend to do is see if I can talk uh, Ken into making a D and a Y that would be in keeping with the Y that's missing on Barry and a, uh, a D that we can put back on and by the time that's done hopefully um, we'll be far enough along in the restoration. But what we intend to do is we intend to deal with things like this. And the binding is totally cracking. And so we want to remove the binding. And so we're going to have fun. So stay tuned and we will do it. Ken will tell you other things about it. He's going to investigate and figure out whether it's a 150 or a Sherwood. He's got a lot of information on this pickup, which is, uh, you know, kind of a 4-1 or to the Charlie Christian, or maybe he ran at the same time. Anyway, Ken will find out. If anybody will find out, Ken's going to find out. So you're going to have a good time watching his stuff in the future. All right, got to love Fred. So, I have that same guitar right here, and I have the opportunity now to use the Guitar Susan. What is a Guitar Susan? Well, 
it is an indicator that you are not a subscriber and you have not seen the episode called Guitar Susan. Link to it right up there, right about now. It lets me put a camera right here and use Chick Flick TO Pointer to go through the attributes of a fine specimen like this and show you the, where is it? Before, and then ultimately the after, yeah. So, let's set the camera up. And let's take a look at this guitar. Find out, like Fred said, what is it? Who made it? Some of its features. And then we'll take a look at some of the things that are right with it. And some of the things that are very wrong with it. Let's go to the Guitar Susan. All right, let's start with this contraption right here. A little bird told me that you can use a chair swivel for things other than a chair swivel. Or a chair swiveler. -er. Yeah, so I took a square piece of wood, a round piece of wood, and a broom handle situation and made this wonderful spinning guitar display. Now, the camera angle isn't everything it needs to be. I guess I should shoot portrait instead of landscape, but oh well. This is going to suffice to show us what this guitar is. Now, Fred raised the point. Let's do an up and down scan of this thing. Top to bottom. There we go. Now, Fred raised a question as to whether this is a K model K150 or whether it is a Sherwood or a Sherwood Deluxe. So let's address that first and we'll zoom in on the headstock. Oh, look at this fine camera work. Now, it says K up there. K, why with a K here? Now, we all know that K made guitars. They kept the brand for themselves and sold them as their own uh, and then made any number of guitars for Sears, Montgomery Wards, um, Western Auto. Who else am I missing? Anyway, there was a ton of them. They were a jobber that would put people's names on the guitar. So, this headstock does not say... Uh, anything but K. So it's not a Sherwood, but is it the same model as a Sherwood? Of course it is. Uh, Sherwood was made for Montgomery Wards. This headstock was also seen on K thin twins of the same time frame, 1949, 50, 51, 52. Let's go down um, the fretboard here, the fingerboard, whatever you want to call it. It is 19 frets, and I like the fret markers. They remind me of a, ready for this? Ooh, Grover Imperial Tuner. Hey, if you ever run across these for a good price, pick them up, definitely. So, getting into some really interesting stuff here. That control plate right there is made out of the same material that you would find in a um, pit guard or uh, something. It's in rough shape, but it has a tone control and a volume control. Um, it has an off and an on, which is high and low, and uh, a bass and treble. I would hate to try and find this. Um, and you'll notice that it's got a few cracks here, and it's basically disintegrating, just like the binding. Let's take a look at the binding here. Can we see the binding? The binding is all cracked and coming apart. Celluloid binding. Um, this stuff is not easy to work with in terms of your health. Um, and so part of what I'm going to do with this guitar is to put take off this binding and get the binding channel ready for new binding. Um, what else do we have here? Um, 
there's a name on this guitar. Let's zoom out a little bit. Um, as Fred said, this belonged to Woody Perry. Um, Fred actually wants me to try to catch the missing letters, which is a D and a Y, and I think I can flatten out an O and make it into a D, and there's a Y up here, um, so I can just basically do a rubbing of these letters, uh, put some newsprint over it and catch it, and then work it out on some thin um, veneer wood type wood. Um, interesting part about this guitar is it has this Jimmy Reed pickup. Now, I have it plugged into an amp, and unfortunately, the magnet on the amp is incredible, but or the pickup, but it's not working. Doesn't mean it doesn't work, but um, it could be a wiring problem, could be anything. Um, we already talked about it has a long scale length. The um, body is a 17 inch body, um, so it's you measure these at their widest part here, like so. And it's definitely 17 inches wide, big bodied guitar. Um, everything here appears to be original on the body. The only thing that I think is not original are the tuners. I think those may have been changed at least once. Now you'll see that it has the mounts for the pit guard. I do have a pit guard. Um, that would fit this model short of this cutout. So um, it may be necessary to make one. We can see over on the side here that, oh, it's trying. You can hear it. It's trying. It's come through the end. But it has the pit guard bracket. It has everything. But again, you can see that the binding is coming apart there. Let's flip this around and have a look at the back. Okay, we're getting in the altitude of Honest Abe up there. Hey, how you doing? And um, you can see that these tuners, it appears that they're a tad bit crooked. Um, the, the, the pegs uh, don't seem to be bent that bad. That one's a little bit out, but it almost looks to me like if we were to take these off, you would find that there's another set of holes under there possibly an inline set of Clusen tuners from back then. The neck is interesting. It's got a piece of wood that follows it down. And then let's see if we can't zoom in here on this neck joint. Everything appears to be pretty good, except there's a crack running right there. It's been there for a while, you can tell. Usually... Um, I had somebody in the oil field try to tell me one time that I broke off some bolts with my rig up truck moving a piece of equipment around and was trying to charge the company until I reminded them that fresh bolts that are broken are shiny and not rusty. So, yeah, there is a crack somewhere there. It doesn't seem um, to come around to the side over here, so it may be a, a crack in a thin layer of this um, celluloid material, again, this pit guard material. Um, let's zoom back out and lower the camera back down. The other, lower it back down. And um, yeah, the back of this thing is really beautiful. It is not scuffed up at all. Um, but the big deal with this thing is the binding. We'll have a look at those tuners, and then there's some electronics work. Okay, when it comes to this kind of stuff, if this guitar is in super good shape and plays, it's worth 2000 on up. Just depends on who wants it. Um, in a condition, there are guitars that I've seen like this that are missing all of the uh, electronics, the pickup, um, you want to remember that these were put out on a number of electric guitars that were trendy at the time. So you can buy these on the internet um, starting at price range 200 on up. But guitars that are missing the control plate, 
the original knobs, this kind of stuff, they're still fetching a $1,000 uh, on these big body arch tops. Um, the good thing about this is there's no significant body damage anywhere, no cracks. Um, Fred was worried about that scratch there. He cranks out some really, really good work. Uh, but you have the original trapeze tailpiece, the original bridge is here. Um, and then you've got everything down to the screws. You even got the pin jack down there at the bottom. Um, but all the original hardware is here. Um, so in terms of a guitar to do something with, it doesn't get any better than this. When you start replacing these pieces that aren't original and stuff, then it turns into my stuff, which is junk pile work. And um, certainly a big difference between this and then, of course, it's got the provenance. Somebody wants their grandfather's guitar back, and there's no price on that. All right. Was that not cool or what? Always love visiting with Fred. Um, I am actually going to be the one to uh, take a look at these letters here and try to match them somewhere or cut some out of some stock to restore this. Uh, as I said, I'm worried about um, this control plate. This is made out of the same stuff except thinner that the um, pit guard was made out of. Uh, and then I am going to remove this binding. Now, I did a series or a couple of episodes in a playlist about how to remove and replace binding and it was on a archcraft built between 1933 and 1937 by K and there's a link to that right up there right about now but anyway I'm gonna to get to work on this and um, we're gonna give you periodic updates on the progress of this fine instrument believe you me this was Coveter's Corner, Christmas, 1950. See you soon. Oh, hey, if you don't give me a like, now I can't help you. I'll pray for you. I'll light a candle for you. But yeah, like and subscribe. See you soon.